I just wanted uh, briefly to uh, reinforce the message uh, that I left, left at the end, namely that uh, students, when they're 14, 15, 16, 17, high school age, this is when to get at them and fire up that enthusiasm which they will carry with them to their colleges. And I did hear the William and Mary president make that statement, that statement uh, at the ceremony. He simply said, think now of a high school teacher who is more responsible for your being here as new members of Phi Beta Kappa than anyone in your life except for your parents and families. And I think that's the, uh, that is the importance uh, of your participation in this education in America, the legacy of American military history in the Second World War. Let me just uh, finish by saying next summer, when I hope that the uh, COVID will be <laughs> behind us, uh, and you come to the World War, World War II Memorial, you'll get a sense of, of what the crowd, the usually a crowd of a couple thousand, how they respond to what they are hearing and what they, uh, it, it is a message really which communicates the wonderful unity of the country at that time. And uh, that is a message that uh, all of us, I think, should uh, employ in our lives as citizens uh, almost uh, 50 years later, 75 years later, excuse me. Many thanks. Good, goodbye. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask Sai before we take a little break? Um, you can feel free to raise your hand um, and I can call on you or you can type it into the chat box. Just give it a few minutes. Thanks, Sai. Thank you, Zalia. Okay. Well, Um, I don't see a lot of questions popping up, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if you think of any, oh, oh, okay, here, here's a question from David Trail. Are you ready, Sai? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, the question is, what drives you to Marshall as a role model? That's a great question. Uh, I think that Marshall as a role model represents virtues that are almost extinct in American public and political life. Uh, the most important thing in Marshall's life was to do his duty as well as he could. And when uh, credit was offered, he normally acknowledged it with an abrupt uh, smile, if that, but always for example, refused to write memoirs, refused to uh, draw any attention to himself, and received his only American decoration of the war on the date of his retirement. Harry Truman pinned an oak leaf cluster onto a, a medal he had won in World War I. That was the essence of Marshall. What can I do for the country? Nothing more than an ordinary citizen, if he stopped to think about it, would do when called on by his country. And it's interesting, Marshall did not have a highly developed sense of irony when he was asked what was it that he was proudest of having done in the long history of service to the country, which resulted in his being awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He unhesitatingly said his efforts uh, to build the American army in 1940 by the imposition of the draft and the training program that went along. Not many Nobel laureates uh, would say that kind of thing, and, but that was the essence of uh, George Marshall. Uh, if you're looking for a role model who stands for the best of American patriotism and makes us think a little bit, it seems to me, of the founders of the country and their legacy to, to uh, the history of ancient Rome, uh, of all things, uh, they should think about George Marshall. Awesome. Okay, here's another question um, from Ray Sun, who's on our Education Advisory Board and who will be presenting later this, this um, week. But how has your thinking about Marshall evolved over the many years you've been researching him? 
that's a great question. Uh, it is being uh, it, it has been enriched the more I have done it by seeing uh, other aspects of George Marshall than those that uh, set me, set me on the way to admiring him. Uh, he did have uh, quite a good, for example, sense of humor, uh, which I uh, which I appreciate. Of course, it was uh, very cleanly, but uh, I think that. And I think also uh, his extraordinary talent for picking uh, people who were appropriate for the jobs he was offering them. He didn't much care if you were a quote-unquote character or if you had had a couple of miscues in your career. Uh, he was very, very good, as Peter Drucker once said, comparing him to Sloan of General Motors, at uh, identifying people who had the talent necessary for specific things. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's something. Uh, here, here's one last thing. Uh, Joe Alsop, uh, the uh, uh, famous columnist, said that in pure personal style and presence, standing next to Marshall, he was the most impressive human being I have ever been around. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Also. So I, I, I think I would uh, end, end it right there. I know if my wife were here, she would say, that's enough. <laughs> well, we do have um, at least one more question, if that's all right with you. Sure. All right. Okay, from Carrie Giannotti, um, which generals from Vietnam or the Gulf Wars can be on par with the generals you mentioned from World War II? That's a wonderful question. Uh, I think uh, immediately uh, of one general, uh, Creighton Abrams, who uh, I think embodied the qualities that we most admire in the generation of Marshall and Eisenhower and their contemporaries. Uh, Creighton Abrams, who was a tank commander in World War II and the Third Army under, under Patton, uh, was a gifted soldier, but had the same personal qualities which uh, commanded the loyalty and which inspired uh, those who worked, worked for him. And he did this very much in the context of a war that he knew was certainly not popular uh, at home. Uh, and so I would say, yes, Abrams, and I think I would leave it uh, for the time being uh, there. Awesome. Okay, and then one more, one more question that I see um, is, do you have any particular reading recommendations on Marshall? Uh, the, the great Marshall book is by Forrest Pogue, uh, which is a... Uh, really quite an exhaustive look at his career. It's in several volumes, uh, all, all now uh, available. And I think that, that book in particular, another book I would recommend is called uh, uh, FDR Centurions, uh, published uh, about two or three years ago by another very good uh, historian. And if I may be permitted to uh, uh, mention a, a book that will be coming out probably early next year, a one-volume life of uh, Marshall uh, by him who now addresses you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Sai. I don't see any other questions right now, but I did want to mention that on our website, we have a list of book World War II book recommendations from Sai, and I can also send that around to everyone so that you can get 